layout of a proof, side angle side. I know in my previous video I said we'd go straight into the angle side angle, but I thought it might be smarter to do a proof right now because we just did this video as number 101. So let's take a step back and see what we've got here, like I always do. We've got our drawing, which we need so that we can make sense of all of this. We have our proof table with our statements on the left and our reasons on the right. We have our given, which is our evidence, and we have our prove, the thing we're trying to prove. Okay, so let's take a look at the drawing. All right, well, we've got this drawing here. It looks like these two legs are the same. It's got a line bisecting it down to the midpoint here. Looks like angle one and angle two are right angles that are equal, they're congruent. Kind of looks like these are congruent too, doesn't it? And these are congruent because this bisects it as perpendicular, doesn't it? All right, well, let's see what we've got here. This is the evidence and the information that was given to us. PN, okay, the brown one, is perpendicular to MQ. Yeah, okay. Line MN, this little guy right here, this segment, is congruent to NQ. Okay. They want us to prove that triangle PNM, PNM, is congruent to PNQ. Okay. So, the first thing we're going to do is plug in the given that PN is perpendicular to MQ. And we put that it's given information. We also put that angle one and angle two are congruent because they are, right? Our reasoning is if two lines are perpendicular, they meet to form congruent adjacent angles. That is something we covered earlier when we were talking about perpendicular lines and you can find the theorem or postulate for it if you look in your list of theorems and postulates in the back of your book. But it's legitimate. So, because we know if two lines are perpendicular, they form to meet adjacent angles, we can now say that line MN, this little guy, is congruent to NQ. That's given, okay? PN, this guy, is congruent to PN. How can we say that one line is congruent to another line? Well, look at this. When you're trying to prove two triangles are congruent and they share a common side, the statement PN is congruent to PN is allowed and justified because of the reflexive property of congruence. We just covered that before. Sometimes it's called the identity property, okay? So, we can say that PN is congruent to PN because they share it. If these were pulled apart, then, and this was PN and the other one was XY, we would be able to say they were congruent, okay? So we use the reflexive property of congruence. <clears throat> and if you look, in step three, we used MN, and in step four, we used PN, and they both, MN and PN, both include angle one. So SAS, sine angle side, is used to prove that these two triangles are congruent. Do you understand that because we used MN in this step and PN in this step, and they both include angle one, we were able to use SAS, which we covered in our previous video, that if two sides of the included angle of one triangle are are congruent equal to two sides and the included angle of a second triangle, then the triangles are congruent. So it's basically this. Triangle one, triangle two. Side, angle, side. That's what it's called. S-A-S, -S, side, angle, side. Okay? Side, angle, side is congruent to side, angle, side. P-N, this guy, is congruent to P-N. Okay? Angle one is congruent to angle two. And M-N is congruent to NQ, side, angle, side. When side angles and side like that are both congruent, then it proves that the two triangles are congruent. So we did our prove and it worked. So I'm going to do one more layout of a proof for side, angle, side 
just to drill the point home so that you can totally understand and I'll use this angle and that angle on the outside. Okay, see you next video.